All right, welcome back to another coding interview question, and we're going to get right into it. So the question today is, given an n by n matrix, each pixel in an image is represented by an integer, write a method to rotate the image by 90 degrees, and then can we do it in place? Okay, so the first thing we should be doing is understanding the question and um, look at some inputs and see how it works out, okay? So if we say that n equals 3, this means this is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. If n equals 4, it's going to be a 4 by 4 matrix and so forth. If n equals 10, it's going to be 10 by 10 matrix. Okay, uh, for our examples, I'm just be using random integers for all the cells in the matrix, so it doesn't matter. But this is also uh, represented as a 2D array. Okay, and a 2D array is if you have a typical, uh, a typical array, that means that each index in the array has its own array as well. So let's go over, uh, let's go over an uh, example of rotating one of these by 90 degrees and how that would look. So uh, let's go with the first one. This is always the easy input first. It was a three by three matrix. Um, so we have uh, the three by three matrix on the left, the original, and then on the right, we have it being rotated by 90 degrees. All right, so let's look at um, whenever you're like going through a coding interview question and you're going through um, example inputs because you're trying to understand um, like what's actually happening. Let's go, let's go through that and do that here, okay? So what looks like um, we have in the first row here, we have five, seven, nine. Now, those, all three of those cells also happen to be, or that correspond to the column um, over here on the, when we rotate at 90 degrees. So it basically looks like the first row becomes the last column uh, whenever we rotate by 90 degrees. And let me do another color. If we do the second row here, that kind of becomes the second column um, when we rotate at 90 degrees. And then on the last row in the original uh, matrix, that kind of the, it becomes the first column in the rotated matrix. So what is that? Uh, so what is kind of like a pattern happening here? Right? So we can say row of zero equals column of two in this in this instance, okay? We can say uh, row of one equals column one, and then row of two equals uh, column zero. Yeah, so I'm, uh, you could say row one, two, three, or column one, two, three. I'm just doing it like it's an array indexed. Um, but yeah, so the first row uh, becomes the last column, the middle row becomes the middle column, and the last row becomes the first column. So we're just kind of like shifting everything, obviously 90 degrees, um, but it looks like we're just kind of standing um, the rows and making the rows into columns. Okay, and this is gonna be the same thing for the four by four matrix. The first row will become the last column, like the last row will become the first column. So now we kind of have a pattern of how this is playing out. So how would we code this? Well, we would need an, uh, the, the brute force way, which is kind of how you want to approach it first because you want to solve the problem. And whenever you start solving a problem and you're thinking it out loud to the interviewer, you kind of develop ideas for maybe how it can be optimized, which is what they will ask you is after you solve it with a, typically the brute force way, can it be optimized? <laughs> and in this case, they want us, they're asking us to do it in place, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use extra storage space uh, to solve the issue or solve the problem. Okay, so how would we shift everything over in code um, to rotate at 90 degrees? Well, what we do is we'd have to iterate over all of the uh, cells in the matrix or indices in the 2D array. And every, every time we're doing that, which is going to be a nested loop, by the way, uh, we're just going to, the new matrix, we're just going to put the corresponding um, indexes in, in the new place it's supposed to be, which we saw here. So we'd go over the first row, put that, um, we would put that in the last column, you know, this, the second row we put in the middle column and the last row we put in the first column. Okay, so this is gonna, this requires extra storage space and 
um, a nested loop. All right, so now the problem is we want to do this in place. How do we do that? Okay, before we kind of did like a circular motion around the matrix, and um, it, that was easier because we could just put those values into another matrix, you know, the brute force way. That was relatively easy, okay? So, but now we don't have that extra storage space. So how can we do this? Well, in a typical swap operation, uh, you can do something, you can swap things in place because you hold like a temporary variable, you perform a swap, and then the last thing you wanna set is uh, that temp whatever that was in that side, that temporary variable. Okay, so that's kind of like how a swap works. Well, if we kind of take this piece by piece, we can pretty kind of do that. We can still go around the matrix in a circular motion um, and replacing values, uh, but we can do it in place because of swapping, right? Because we can hold temporary uh, we can hold temporary variables, um, store their values, and then wait till we need to, wait till we need to use it again. Okay. So let's take a look how we can do this, right? So if we go to the outer layer, or if, yeah, first off, let's think about this as layers, okay? We have an outer layer and an inner layer. So the inner layer is like the, where the 6, 7, 13, 11 are, and the outer layer is what we're gonna, um, that's what we're gonna replace first, okay? So we can kind of go from the outside and move into the inside. So if you have like a 10 by 10 array, you know, you're gonna do the very outside layer, move in one, Move in one again and again and again eventually till you until you can't go in anymore. Okay. And that can be done using the for loops, right? So uh if so if we start at the corners of the layer and right now we're on the outside layer, um replace those, then we can move over one and start uh replacing all of those values, right? And then if we move over one again. We replace all of those values and now look we're done with the outside layer okay and what we would do next is we would move inside and we would replace all of those and then we're done right so this idea we're on if we take everything by a layer rotate everything uh one by one right don't don't rotate um like a whole top row by to another column kind of like what we did before that was easy because we had a whole other matrix to put them in, right? But we still have to go iterate over everything. Let's just replace one by one and then move in, do it again, move in and do it, keep moving in until you're done replacing all of that layer and then uh, move down another layer and do the same thing. And we just repeat this process, okay? Um, and it actually the code isn't that difficult, right? Um, and we'll see that in just a second, okay? Okay, so here is the code to replace, um, to rotate the matrix in place. As you see, there's not actually that many lines of code to this, okay? So one, there's a couple things that you do need to be aware of, all right? First off, we're still, this is still a time complexity of n squared because we still have to go through the whole 2D array. In order to go through a whole 2D array, you have a nested for loop, all right? So we can't really, in, we can't really make that better. Um, but the only thing we made better was the space complexity because we don't have to use extra storage now, all right? Uh, so we don't, there's no other matrix that we're creating. So we have our two for loops here. Um, so you see the outer one, we're saying size divided by two. As you notice that in the four by four matrix, we didn't have to go from the top left all the way to the top right. We, we stopped before we got to the top right because um, uh, because we had already rotated uh, the top right cell by that point. We don't have to go through all the rows, right? We actually have to go through about half of them, okay? And that's why uh, this matrix length, so four divided by two, we're only, going, um, we're only going through half of them, okay? So we don't have to go through all that, first thing. And then the nested for loop, we're going, um, we're going, we had to set column equals to row because if you noticed, we also, when we went to the inside, after we're done with the outer layer, we went in the inside. We didn't just drop down a row. We dropped down a row and went over one. So when we're done with the outer layer's first iteration, we increase row to one. Well, we have to, 
that means also the column has to be set to one as well because we can't just drop down. We have to drop down and go over one. So that's kind of what we're doing this for loop, right? The outer loop is, uh, you know, we're at that layer, and then when we iter when we increase the outer loop, we're going inside again. Okay, that's kind of what that's kind of what's happening there, right? So we're going inside again, and then we're going iterating through all the columns. Uh, you see, we're rotating everything here. We set a temporary variable. Um, we we kind of replace everything, and then the last one we're setting back to that temporary variable. Okay, and that's kind of it. All right. Uh, there's another way you can actually solve this using um, something called matrix transpose, which I might do another video. Uh, but this one, uh, this one kind of makes more sense because that relies if you're in a coding interview, that's relying on you understanding what transpose is. And if you don't, you can still solve this um, using like a logical way. All right. And that's just kind of doing a swap um, layer by layer. Okay. All right. So I hope all this made sense. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to help you understand if you haven't any, if you kind of didn't understand some of this. Um, but I would advise you to whenever you're doing these coding uh, interview questions in person, make sure that you just go over inputs, go through some examples with them to make sure you understand the question first. Okay. And then do the brute force way and then try to solve it another way um, that is a little bit better. Okay. In this case, we don't need the extra space, which is actually what the question asked, but, um, so we need to do that. <laughs> but even if you can't always try to solve it somehow first and then tell them why or how you might be able to do it better. Um, okay. All right. Well, I'll see you guys in the next video.